Hi, my name is Faileen, and my son has ADHD. Deciding what to say on this video was tough. Should I tell you about my wonderful son? He's generous, he's charming, he's funny, he's brilliant, he's caring. As a mom, I'm blessed uh, to have him as my son. Or should I tell you about how tough it's been to watch him struggle in school despite his obvious intelligence and his love of learning? Hatchworks of accommodations cobbled together by well-meaning advocates, inconsistently applied by overworked teachers who are just praying for enough calm in the classroom to be able to get through the lesson plan? I don't know. I think our story is probably similar to that of many families living with ADHD. As a mom, I want to support and I want to celebrate my son's uniqueness. I don't want to create the impression that there's something wrong with him or ADHD is a life sentence of difficulty. But guess what? That's how it feels sometimes to him. And I know that sometimes I play a part in shaping that message. My son wasn't diagnosed with ADHD until pretty recently. He is one of those quiet but funny kids. He doesn't present with stereotypical ADHD. He also has a learning disability and some other unique neurological needs, which was actually lucky for us because in Ontario, despite being recognized as a neurological condition for over 50 years, ADHD doesn't qualify as a condition requiring accommodation in school. Despite its impact to executive functioning, information processing, and attention, despite the fact that not accommodating kids with ADHD in the classroom creates an environment that impedes everyone's learning. Because my son has a learning disability, we're actually able to get an IEP and to get him into classes that were taught by teachers who specialized in learning differences and teachers who get it. My son learned to facilitate his learning using a laptop. This was before individual technology was rolled out to everyone in school. And he developed a deep understanding of his own learning needs. And he started to develop the confidence to ask for what he needed. But our local board cut funding to all those programs. And during that crucial transition from grade school to high school, my son was left high and dry so our board could meet its budget. I went to so many meetings, I became an expert at putting together a PowerPoint deck to present to budget committees to trustees to administrators. But sometimes in a David and Goliath fight, David gets her butt handed to her on a plate. I'm still disappointed because I know we can do better for our kids and they deserve to have their learning needs met. High school has been a tough one. No surprise. High school is tough for everyone. And then try layering on learning differences and it's a white knuckle ride. I meet with my son's teachers every year and I give them a short summary of my son's strengths and a list of easy to implement effective accommodations. I always start with his strengths because I've seen too many teachers' eyes glaze over when you say ADHD and then stop listening. The stigma and the stereotypes are so deeply rooted that even well-meaning teachers, of which there are many, don't always catch themselves and they let the stereotypes inform their thinking. I try to walk that fine line between providing added value information that will help them successfully support my son to being pushy and getting all up in their business. I'm worried about being that parent and having teachers dismiss what I have to say or worse, let their annoyance with me impact how they treat my son. We didn't get the support we needed in the school system. My son has been seeing educational consultants and ADHD coaches for years because his learning was not accommodated effectively in school. And none of that is covered under any benefit program, so it adds up. He doesn't qualify for the CRA tax credit, so even though these additional costs are directly linked to a neurological condition and require for him to be successful in school, there's no help for us to mitigate these costs. But I'll tell you something, I will sell my car, I will sell my house if I have to so that I can get what he needs. School and learning is too important. And if I can't get the existing school system to accommodate him, then I will do what I can to get him support so he can work successfully within the school system as it exists. And I know I'm in a lucky and privileged position to be able to have those assets to sell if I need to. 
You know what? It's simply amazing, though, to see his eyes light up when he's interested in something and research it exhaustively and share his passion. He'll have new angles. He'll have new ideas. He'll find obscure references. He'll go back to primary sources. He's got ideas to address climate change. He's developed socio-political models to mitigate poverty. He loves physics. He loves astronomy. He loves engineering. He's got an incredible appetite for learning. And as tough as it's been for both of us, I'm really happy with what we've accomplished. His ADHD may make traditional learning environments tough, but it gives him a unique creative spark and a drive to find out everything there is to know about his subjects of interest and a desire to share what he knows. It's like an information superpower. And I know that as hard as I have found our path to be, it's actually been easier than many other people's. And my son's only halfway through high school. Arguably, the toughest years are still ahead of us. I hope we've laid a good foundation. I hope we'll see decreased stigma around ADHD. I hope we'll get appropriate funding and accommodations in schools for all the kids with ADHD. I have yet to discover a biological condition that goes away by ignoring it. I imagine ADHD is no different. It's time to stop sweeping it under the rug. ADHD can be challenging, but let's meet that challenge head on. And in doing so, we'll help all the kids with ADHD shine and become the amazing grown-ups they're meant to be. That's my ADHD story. What's yours?